Hey, welcome to another week here at Tutorial Learn. We are making some pretty good progress again this week. We are running some network cables, CAT6 cables throughout the building. We put a cabinet together that is going to have a house, all my internet and a networking supplies in it. Um, I have two electricians here that are run that are connecting the sub panels to the main breaker. Um, they're running the wire right now, so that's kind of the progress that we so far. And then we'll see what else we can get done this week. So Thomas and I put this cabinet together. Um, it is a locked cabinet, really just for the purpose of to keep it out of the way, keep the dust out and everything. But basically what goes in here is going to be my internet. We will have a fiber internet going right into the box. And then I will distribute the fiber internet with CAT6 cable throughout the house. Why am I running so many different CAT6 cables? Well, first answer is I want to be future proof so in different bedrooms when I might have a gaming PC or an Xbox or something it's always best to have them hardwired to have less latency so you get a better speed you get better connection if you have it hardwired I'm running actually multiple service lines to each room or at least to each bedroom but mainly I'm running it on one side of the uh, room and then on the other side so that way if you ever wanted to move the desk around you can really just rearrange the room and you still have service in that room. Further, I am always running two separate lines to each one of the boxes, mainly because I know in, 
in a kids room we might have an xbox and the gaming pc or something in the future in one of those rooms so therefore having two separate uh, service lines in there on each one of the boxes is um, really easy to do now it's harder to add more service later you don't have to have a switch at that uh, location you can actually have it all controlled over here um, so from that perspective i'm trying to just run it that way further you might have a tv um, besides a uh, pc or something so therefore having all those options right now is easy i can run the cable or while the walls are open so that makes it simpler two things about this box that i wanted to still mention is if you buy or you want to install one of those enclosed boxes to keep the sound down a little bit because some of those switches that you might use or internet um, switches that you might use have um, some fans in there they might be loud so if you're buying an enclosed one keep in mind um, always to buy them uh, with fans so you need to make sure that there's good air circulation in those because these devices get hot and when they get hot obviously they burn out so keeping this these cabinets cooled is very important so keep enough space around them so that they can have airflow coming um, the second thing uh, about those boxes is i would always recommend to put them in a centralized space in your building um, in our case here we chose the laundry room uh, the laundry closet across from um, all the other things is first of all um, i'm not worried that this is getting wet um, first of all it's sitting above um, and second of all this room itself shouldn't really get um, very humid we have the dryer vent um, going to the outside so itself the room shouldn't get um, extremely humid so this should be still fine um, and then otherwise the laundry room is very centralized located in our building it's on the second floor right um, in between all the bedrooms so that's the nice thing and then obviously just the floor above it what we would use heavily the internet too is our master bedroom with the office space and then right underneath it is living room and dining room area so we can feed in all the different directions from here um, we'll obviously have a few cables that are running into the basement so keeping maybe a conduit run that's one of the things that we want to do next week is running conduit down into the basement so that we can add more cables in the future um, mainly for the reason we might put a movie room or a game room or even outside we might want to add if we ever do a um, some entertainment area outside we might want to have some tvs there not having to rely on wi-fi for the tvs and actually having a dedicated line would be the nice thing so having conduit run into the basement um, to just support future upgrades um, so keep in mind if you're building add add yourself some extra wires because it's just really helpful as your walls are already open um, if you're renovating just adding more than you think you need right now doesn't hurt it does it's not really expensive to do it at, at this stage but it's going to be really um, a hassle and expensive to do it later as you have to either open the walls again add um, add wire later and you cannot guarantee when you uh, when you open walls later on that you might um, have uh, might not run across um, existing electrical wires so then you want to use uh, follow the rules again with staying eight inches away from parallel runs and not touching wires that you're crossing so rather do it beforehand add more then you don't have a hassle and headache later. So right here we have the TV that is going to mount here in the living room. This is the living room area. We have obviously power for the TV. We have the CAT6 cables are going to go in here. They are coming from um, above right down to it because I have the power cable coming along this start up. So we don't want to run in parallel. It is okay to have a box right next to the other one. It's actually even okay to have the same 
um, use the same box and just have a double white box. The one thing to keep in mind again is you do not want to have the power cables touch the um, CAT6 cables and that's one of the main reasons why I just chose to do two separate uh, boxes next to each other. This still gives us the opportunity to mount the TV on the stud above or below with a, with a wall mount but then have the support um, or but then have the two boxes right behind the TV so they are hidden. Um, one of the things that um, a lot of people don't um, think about when they're building the houses where the TV is going to go in the living room and then you have these cables that are running up um, on the wall. You can obviously add uh, these in wall um, tubes later on but it's nice to just do that beforehand um, so it's all ready for uh, hidden cables. What I want I also do is talk a little bit about what rules have to be followed, at least in the US, when you are running CAT6 low voltage cables. Um, so let me explain a few things. So let's talk cable rules. First of all, I'm, t I'm running here a CAT6 cable, um, standard CAT6 cable. I am um, 32W um, is, I, um, this is gonna be plenty of a gauge for us it doesn't need to be shielded in the residential buildings especially um, at the bandwidth that i would get with a shielded versus an unshielded or even a um, cat 6a upgrade is in a residential application even if i wanted to um, have um, ar or vr capabilities in the future by the amount of distance that i'm running 
the cables are so short that I can still get a, a 10 gig line on one of those cables. So first of all, CAT6 is plenty for residential without shielding. Um, when you're running the cables, there's two things to keep in mind. Is when you run in perpendicular here with a, uh, so when you're basically crossing a power line, one thing to keep in mind is you can do that, no problems. The one, um, the distance you have to keep is, is actually you can cross right over. The only thing that you do not want to do is with CAT6 cable, you do not want to touch uh, the power label cables. Um, really just for risk of, um, of interference. So what we did here is we just added some PVC. Um, I know that's not um, code or not code. Um, in a residential application, there is no such thing as with the vo uh, low voltage when you're just crossing a normal thing. We wanted to make it ourselves easier to not have to worry about this uh, power cable to run by here, especially since we are running all our wires, right, or all the ones that are going down from here, right past it. So we added ourselves um, three PVC pipes to just guarantee that we are not pa um, passing right over the cable. Um, the second thing is if you're running in parallel. So let's just say we would want to run the cables like this um, across the same, the same area where we have already a power cable. What you have to do is you have to, at, the st at standard power cables, you have to stay at least eight inches away from it. So I cannot run it right on top of it. I need to run it at least um, something like this here, eight inches between the cable and the power line when it's run in parallel. Um, reason for that is, is obviously as soon as you have power here, it creates a magnetic field which can create um, magnetic interference. So therefore having that distance to guarantee that there's no interference um, is important. That's also one of the reasons why it's taking us a little longer to run these cables because we want to make sure we have um, the right path figured out before we start running the cable. So um, let me show you downstairs what we did and why we did it um, for, the main uh, for the main cables. Here you can see on the left side the orange cables is our CAT6 cable and obviously on the right we have uh, electrical cables also in the middle here there's always some light. So what I did is we chose this bay all the way on the outside to run our cables. We are trying to stay away from the distance, um, at least an inch away from the cable when we're crossing them um, on all of the different crosses that we have. We have, we try to keep an inch distance between the holes um, to guarantee that. Um, I'm also bundling them. As soon as I'm all of them done, I will um, use some cable ties and tie them together to make it a look, uh, look a little nicer and just keep them uh, nice here. I have some loops here. You don't want to bend them too closely. I have some loop here just because I want to make uh, a nice bend here at the end of the cable. But um, those kind of things to keep in mind here, just keep a bay or something that you use the cable on. What is important now to also make sure is that you don't run on the other side of this um, joist here like here on the right side here, that we would run another power cable in parallel because then we would have the issue again about interference. So keeping them in their own bay with um, making sure that there's nothing on the, in the next bay would also be good. One other advantage of running a lot of CAT6 cable um, in your house is make sure to run them outside to the walls and the spots where you might want to attach a camera. Um, normally for a camera you would have to run HDMI cables or um, and or power to them. Wi-Fi cameras are obviously a great thing to do but they obviously need either battery or power still. These cables can provide the network ca uh, attach, uh, can provide the network feed to just provide um, in immediate internet access so the camera can upload um, their footage to wherever you're using it. Plus um, over CAT6 and CAT5 you can actually run power over Ethernet and so as long as your camera can, pro can support power over the networking, um, networking jack therefore you don't have to run extra power to them so you only have to run one cable to the camera spots so that's one of the things that we will have to do we will just run um, all, all the different spots on the outside of the building where we want to attach a camera we will also run one of those cables too. So here's an example of um, a bedroom. This is Elias's bedroom. We have 
one of the CAT6 cable uh, boxes going right here on the far wall. And then we have another one right at the short wall between over here. Um, reasoning here is the bed can either go here or on this wall. So what that would mean is we would have a desk either sitting right here or a desk anywhere along this wall. So allowing us to not have to run a cable from this box or across the floor somewhere over here is really just nice. This cable is pretty, pretty cheap. It's just a few extra dollars to run more cables right now. So that's one of the reasons why we're doing that. Stay tuned for part two of our networking cable um, explanations. What we will do next week is we will explain um, kind of what tools to use when you are terminating these, what kind of jackets there are to terminate them, the female version and the male version. And I will show you guys also how one of those cables is attached. Here you can see some of the cabling that the electricians ran to power all my sub panels. Each one of the sub panels basically has one of these wires coming in. It's a four stranded wire to power the neutral and left and right and then the also the ground. So there's two hot, a black and a red one that is coming in. And you can see they ran one of those cables to each one of our sub panel boxes. Here you can see they ran it nicely, tucked it away in the basement. Sorry about the lighting here, I don't have any lights yet. But all next to each other, running all the way over to the main breaker panels. So you can see the electricians ran the cables down into the box, they haven't connected it yet. Um, we are waiting for a couple more breakers that I had to have shipped because they didn't really have them in stock anywhere here. But basically you can see I have two uh, main panels already in the in the basement here. There is two main cables that are coming in for 200 amp voltage, uh, for 200 amp service coming in on each one. There's actually two meters outside, well there's one meter outside but there's theoretically spots for two. This left panel here does not have power yet. So I need to talk to the um, electric company to see if they can provide power to my uh, second panel also. What I would prefer them to do is instead of using the two, pa uh, the two meters outside um, to actually combine them into one meter so that I don't have to pay connection fee um, every month um, twice. But I'm gonna talk with them and see what they can do. And then obviously um, as soon as my breakers are coming over, uh, are arriving we will connect these um, sub panel wires to a breaker in here. So it'll be a 100, 100 amp um, service from this side and then two 100 amp services uh, for this side that goes up to the breaker, uh, to the sub panels. Um, why did we choose 100 amp for each? Um, even though some of them probably won't need it, really just so that we have the upgrade capability in the future if we ever needed to add some uh, extra service in one of the panels we have the uh, extra bandwidth extra capacity to do so um, and also it keeps it simple we have the same type of wire that we're running everywhere everything is the same Julie and I have a question um, so I would love you guys to hear the comment in the comments below if you guys have smart devices in your house I know we can have nowadays um, smart thermostats cameras uh, light switches or even the light bulbs themselves um, or even an outlet that can be on a timer or even more complicated with Alexa or Google Assistant or uh, Apple Siri can be obviously controlling a lot of those devices. So do you guys have smart devices in your building or are you planning on putting them in and what types of them are you using? Um, we, we are really interested to see also kind of like um, if you have built a new house so we kind of know, okay, is it a new construction home where you just decided to make um, some of the devices smarter or are you doing a renovation style where you're actually opening the walls or actually just um, <clears throat> doing everything over Wi-Fi. So let us know. We really are interested to know what people have done as to make their lives easier or maybe also why you don't choose to do um, some of the smart devices. Well, I think this is it for this week. Have a good one. Bye.